Welcome to Switched on IT. I'm Barry. This is the show where we talk about everything IT. Uh, in this show today, as usual, we will have uh, Doug Endersby and Ray Sidney Smith with us. Today, they are going to talk about video. Um, one of the uh, things that we know from YouTube is that YouTube loves video uh, and Google loves video. So, uh, and video is a great way for you to be able to present yourself because it gives you a live face uh, to the things that you're doing rather than just pictures. So, uh, I'm going to turn this over now. Um, we've got uh, Ray and Doug with us. Good morning, gentlemen. Hello, Good morning, Barry. Barry. I'm going to uh, turn this over to you now, Ray, Sydney Smith, and Doug Indusby. Talk to us about what we can do to promote ourselves using video. Thanks, thanks, Barry. I, I, I think um, you know, video is a, an increasingly used uh, marketing tool for for you know business operators and small business operators I, I think everyone's still learning the rules of the road and how to how to best use video marketing at, at, at Oz hosting we we do a little bit of uh, a video often it's more to create um, do it yourself or self-help content you know how to videos on how to add a, a new staff member to a, a mailbox or something like that um, and, and our customers, I know, find them very useful. But today we're talking about live video streaming, which is a, a you know a marketing tactic that, that I'm not all that familiar with. So I've got a lot of questions today for for Ray over there in in uh, Virginia to to find out what he's observing as the best ways to to uh, to employ or deploy video marketing and some of the tips and hints in in doing that. Um, one of the first questions I've got, Ray, is just in terms of the, um, you know, the platforms that people can access. Is it expensive or are there, you know, is there plenty of sort of either free or inexpensive platforms that small business operators can use to, to make live streaming viable for them? Yeah, so uh, I would start with the fact that uh, just taking a step back in terms of how important video is to uh, marketing, especially as it relates to business today, uh, but anyone trying to reach people, uh, video will end up taking about four-fifths of the internet traffic uh, by the end of this year, 2019. The estimates are that four-fifths of the, that is 80% of the world's internet traffic will be will be video. And uh, so the, the reality is, is that people are flocking to video as a form for consumption. And if you are someone trying to get in front of people, you need to be a part of that conversation happening in video. And so from a from a accessibility perspective, in terms of access to the hardware and the platforms necessary, this is kind of like any other thing on online. Uh, we can go from free platforms, which we'll talk about today, all the way up to you name the amount of money you want to spend in terms of budget uh, to make a, a video broadcast happen. Uh, so you can start out at the at the free mark. Uh, using the technology you are already using right now to probably watch us, uh, you can use that technology to uh, to live stream. And then you keep grading up uh, to more and more sophisticated equipment as the uh, you know your marketing campaigns get more sophisticated and it becomes more uh, useful to you as you start to convert more people through those platforms. So I would say that there are a few major platforms today that, that are available for live streaming. There's YouTube Live, which is obviously the largest one out there since YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. Uh, it's a video search engine uh, you know, owned by Google. And then we can go down to Facebook Live. Uh, Facebook Live is, is the platform that allows you to broadcast directly onto the Facebook platform. And with the, the a billion plus uh, Facebook users on the planet, Obviously, that's a big platform for people to be able to uh, broadcast uh, live. But uh, Facebook also owns Instagram. And so Instagram Live is the live platform for Instagram. A lot of people don't know this, but Twitter owns Periscope. And Periscope is the live streaming platform built into Twitter. And so you can actually uh, you know, just open up Twitter. And uh, there is a format for being able to go live directly within your Twitter stream 
and uh, you can you can go ahead and broadcast live to anywhere, uh, you know, from anywhere. And uh, one one thing that I really love about Twitter, though, and, and this is just kind of an aside, is that Twitter's Periscope actually gives you an audio only broadcast option. So if you happen to be aversive to being on camera, that is seeing uh, someone seeing your face, or you happen to be in a location where you may not be able to have your camera on you, and you may be in an environment where you're not allowed to, uh, to broadcast video, uh, you can still broadcast live from Twitter's Periscope with an audio only option. And what it does is in the middle of your screen, basically right here, you would see a little audio frequency movement, uh, you know, as it moves along. So you have some kind of visual while you're um, listening in essence, but you're seeing video even though you're broadcasting live. And, um, and most recently, LinkedIn actually got into the live streaming game, and now LinkedIn has LinkedIn Live. So across all of the major social networks, you have the ability to stream live, and that gives you free accessibility uh, to the masses. And so everybody on those platforms can access them. And so that's the, that's the threshold, Doug, is, is uh, have an account on one of those platforms and probably a mobile device that is connected to broadband internet so that you're able to broadcast with high quality uh, resolution uh, to your audience. Is your computer driving you crazy? Is it slow or doing things you didn't expect? Well, having a computer crash or pick up a virus can be a complete nightmare for a business. So having someone local you can trust to get you up and running again is critical. The dedicated team of experts at Computer Troubleshooters Toowoomba West will put your mind at ease from the moment you walk through the door and will get your problem solved in no time with a 100% guarantee on their work. Laptops, tablets, PCs, whatever you have, Roger and the team can fix it for you. So visit them today at 236 Bridge Street, Newtown. Can't get in to see them? No worries. Just call them on 46 Four two one double three one, and they'll come to you. Toowoomba Troubleshooters, Toowoomba West, on the web at www.computertroubleshooters.com.au forward slash Toowoomba West. Hutchies lives here. We're locals, just like you. To us, construction is really about people, not just bricks and concrete. It's people who bring our structures to life and build communities. We stick by the people who make communities. From Toowoomba Rugby League to RACQ Life Flight Rescue Service, Milton Bay Military Challenge and the Toowoomba Tennis International, Hutchies is proud to back the people who support the region. Oz Hosting is proud to support Switched On IT in bringing practical help to Australian businesses. We're talking to literally hundreds of businesses every day about their IT services how to make them more efficient, how to make their businesses more efficient, and how to protect their valuable data. If you'd like your IT services securely hosted right here in Australia and expertly managed, talk to Oz Hosting. Okay, so um, they all sound like they're going to be free, and I guess given the nature of the audiences, um, Perhaps you'd look at, at LinkedIn as more of a, a tool that if you were doing, you know, business to business, live streaming content and maybe B2C, um, you might select, you know, Facebook or, or YouTube or, you know, Twitter slash Periscope. Is, is that kind of a reasonable div divvying up of, of the platforms or are there some other considerations? Uh, typically, typically, I, I say that LinkedIn is frequently undervalued in the sense that you can talk to people about a lot more than just business in the LinkedIn environment. Remember that you're talking to people in both context, but also as an audience. So if your audience is on LinkedIn, even if you are a business to consumer brand, uh, say that you sell some particular product, but it is a product where most of your users will still have a LinkedIn profile then I see no reason why you wouldn't use LinkedIn Live as an opportunity to live stream. It just comes down to appropriateness and context and whether your audience is there on LinkedIn. I, I think that there are, are many consumer brands that can be effective on LinkedIn, uh, especially in the small business space. 
uh, notwithstanding the fact that they may not be talking about business, but they are talking to business professionals who are part of their audience. So again, it, you know, it's like uh, the it depends answer, uh, but I think I think people shouldn't shouldn't lose sight of the fact that where your audience matters just as much as the context of the social network. So yes, LinkedIn is about professional networking, but there's ample opportunity to uh, you know kind of ride in between those lines with appropriate content that fits the audience that's there. Right. Okay, very good. Um, now, in in preparing for a, uh, you know, preparing to do some, some live streaming and, and using those platforms, is there any sort of features or, or capabilities within the platforms that, that need to be considered? So I'm thinking the ability to, you know, for example, to put on, on captions or um, emojis or anything like that, or is it too spontaneous to really, you know, use capabilities like that? So there are platforms out there that do real-time closed captioning, for example, and um, and then there are platforms that don't. Um, and so that if you have an audience where you are trying to be more accessible, then that would require probably some higher-end tools than these platforms. Um, I believe YouTube does a pretty good job of that live, um, but I'm not quite sure about the others in terms of providing, uh, you know, live uh, closed captioning and that kind of thing. Um, and so um, I, I can look it up afterward. If anyone does have a question about that, feel free to message me and I'll, I'll be able to pull it up for everybody. Uh, but the idea there is to um, provide as much as you can in the real-time environment as you're able to. Uh, so the, the, the real-time live streaming in all of the applications allow people to interact with you so they can write messages. Uh, they can usually send some uh, amount of, of kind of a, a thumbs up or hearts those kinds of things to show approval uh, or you know kind of encouragement while you're live and some of the platforms allow you to bring people into the conversation uh, during uh, during the live stream event so you can actually pull another uh, person who's in the audience say you wanted to do a panel discussion you could actually pull multiple audience members in and bring them live onto screen and so just like we are here in a split screen the system would then split screen for the second person and then add a quarters for the third person and fourth person so that you're kind of you know four up on the page and so people can actually watch all four of you have a live interactive discussion so there there are there are different features per platform and it really depends on the platform that you're you're, you're planning to to live stream from and then decide on on how to do that and then there's a conversation about whether or not you should uh, what we call restream which is you know live stream from one platform but then replicate that stream to other platforms if necessary. So for example, I provide webinars and um, I could decide because my webinar tool gives me the ability to actually push that to YouTube Live and to say Facebook Live at the same time. So that people who are happen to be hanging around on YouTube Live could see the webinar while it was happening live uh, if they happen to have come across my YouTube channel at that time. So there are some, uh, you know, strategic decisions that need to be made, uh, but that comes into what you want to get out of the live stream. Are you trying to create, uh, you know, and generate a, uh, an immediate response from the people who are watching, or are you trying to do the live stream so that you're creating more video content, recording that, and then using that later on downstream in other <laughs> content uh, marketing plans? Okay. So... <clears throat> So that sort of moves us towards the um, the idea of you know the, the sorts of um, content and subject matter topics that that really suit live streaming. So you know, um, have you got any observations about that? Because I'm thinking about um, you know discussion panels discussing you know some of the problems that businesses. Uh, you know, businesses encounter it could be, you know, we've talked a lot about cybersecurity and, and I think it'd be interesting to uh, have some cybersecurity professionals, for example, discussing, you know, what's happened in the last, you know, six months or whatever about cybersecurity. But um, are, there, are there sort of topics that really lend themselves to, to this and, and are there topics that are no-go areas in your opinion? 
Well, I think uh, within law and reason, there's really no topic that's off limits. Uh, you know, the, the, the goal for live streaming is for you to take your subject matter expertise, your thought leadership, or just important moments in your business and to be able to include your audience in the, in the experience. And so I usually believe that that's event driven, usually for most small businesses, that is, you happen to be going to an event and that event is something where you might be learning something that you'll be bringing to your target audience at some point. So say you're going to a conference to learn about, uh, you know, say you're, you're a, a culinary chef and you're going to a, a food show where you'll be, uh, you know, meeting and learning about different uh, culinary techniques. Well, you might live stream from, say, outside the convention center for a few minutes, just letting your audience know about what you anticipate happening at the event and interesting things that you're looking forward to that are on the agenda. And then maybe halfway through the day, you may go live streaming again and talk about some of the things that you learned. Maybe you picked up a new chef's knife or uh, you know, a new Sentoku blade or something like that, and uh, talking about why you made that choice in the process and what you might think about doing X or Y differently now that you've experienced this thing. You might do it after the conference. You decide on what the protocol is, but it's all mostly event-driven. Um, and then you have the other side to it, which is uh, the, the planned live stream, which is less serendipitous, less, you know, uh, ad hoc, uh, where you might decide on a panel discussion like you were talking about, where, or, or um, you know, sitting down and, and um, having a discussion about uh, topical events of the day, uh, like cybersecurity incidents or uh, new marketing trends or those kinds of things. That's more webinar style stuff to me. Um, and so that is fine. I think that's totally legitimate in a live stream environment, especially if it means that you show up and you actually create the video as opposed to not doing it, right? It creates a sense of urgency for you to, to and motivation for you to do it. Uh, but if you happen to be meeting with a colleague, uh, maybe just sitting down and you know having a little you know phone stand, turning on the live stream and making this kind of authentic, serendipitous conversation happen uh, based on the fact that you're already meeting them. Those are the kinds of things that uh, trigger people who uh, may be following you tangentially online but aren't paying a lot of attention. Now we'll give you quite a bit of their focus because this is a a moment where if they don't watch it now, they're not going to get a chance to watch it later. And so there is this FOMO, fear of missing out, that uh, gets triggered. And that little bit of FOMO gets people to, to dial into what you're saying and then to watch it. And the reality is, is that most people actually do record those uh, live streams and make them available afterward. And some people watch it, some don't, but most people like to get involved in the live event because they're able to interact. One of the other really important things that everybody has to take heart to here is that most of the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, when someone goes live, they are pushing notifications out to users, to the people who follow you, that you are going live. And that is a very powerful marketing tool that you don't otherwise get when you just post a new video on your Instagram feed or a new video on YouTube or otherwise, unless you have it set up such that the user, the, the audience member has it set up to be notified every time you put out a video. So because they want to make sure that live video gets, you know, the best viewers, um, the best viewings, they are pushing these notifications to let people know that, that it's happening, uh, which again, increases the, um, you know, the number of people who then watch you. So be, be aware of the fact that it's making it more available to you by, by that. Ray, yeah. one of the other things that, uh, that I think is really uh, crucial for small businesses to be able to make the best use of this is if you're a retailer, for example, uh, one of the things, and this is not used as uh, well as it could be, uh, if you've got a sale on, going live um, uh, during your sale and um, uh, doing a beat up about the sale and saying to people, hey guys, we're live today, um, uh, we've got a sale on, here are some of the things that we've got on sale, make sure you come down and have a look at our stuff, <coughs> is a really good way of getting your message out to people uh, on the spot 
so that people are actually seeing that uh, this is happening right now. Looking for exposure for your business or event? Take your business, community event, training seminar, sports fixture, function, concert or exhibition to the world with Power TV Australia and Power FM's unique live outside simulcasts. We can turn your next local event into a worldwide sensation with stunning live pictures, interviews, graphics and live action replays for a fraction of the usual cost. From a festival or sports fixtures to a corporate or charity event, Power TV Australia and Power FM can take your message live to our local and national viewers and listeners. Invite the world to your party by contacting Barry today on 0431 390 920 or email programming at powertvaustralia.com for a quote. Power TV Australia presents the Celebrity Christmas Telethon, supported by Optus and Harvey Norman Toowoomba, live from Rumours International, November 23 from 4 till 9pm, showcasing some great local talent while raising money for the Toowoomba Hospital Foundation. To donate, phone in and chat to one of our celebrities or be part of the audience at Rumours. For more info, email telethon at powertvaustralia.com or call 0431 390 920. The Celebrity Christmas Telethon, November 23rd, live on powertvaustralia.com. Small and medium-sized businesses are the lifeblood of Australia's economy. Small business expos like this are the best way to showcase your business and meet new customers. The Toowoomba Small Business Expo, Friday, November 29 at the Clive Berghofer Sports Centre, University of Southern Queensland, Baker Street. Your next new business contact will be waiting for you. Proudly supported by Buttercard. Hi, this is Paula Brand. We need to support our local businesses. See you at the expo. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, what, one of the things that I, I, we, I used to advocate in days past was uh, the idea of taking uh, Twitter and um, say, let's go back to that culinary chef. Maybe the, the chef has a pastry shop and uh, tweeting out that the, the new paste, pastries were coming out of the oven in the morning, right? You know, uh, check out the new uh, you know, croissants that are coming out of the oven and letting people know about that. Um, back then, you could tweet out words, 140 characters back then, um, and then you were able to add an image. Uh, so that was a little bit nicer. Then then you were able to add 280 characters and, uh, and upload a video, uh, but those are always asynchronous. Uh, now you have the ability to literally have the pastry chef go live directly from their mobile phone and turn the camera on themselves, and there they are with the with the croissants coming out of the oven, talking about them. You can see them steaming and um, being put on the shelf, and that's a that's a real visceral experience that people really um, you know can can connect with. And when you see the steaming hot coffee and the croissant uh, coming out of the oven and coming out of the, the the pots of coffee, that's going to get people to come by from you. That's going to get them to trigger to be like, you know what, I would I'm going to walk down the block and stop on the way to work um, to grab a cup of coffee from this local pastry shop and grab one of those beautiful looking croissants that came out of the oven. So that's the kind of experience that you want to create for people is to bring them into the process where possible, right? You know, you don't want to give up potentially trade secrets or, um, you know, show anything that you don't want to show behind the scenes, but as much as you can be authentic and show some of the operations of the business, those can be some of the most strong marketing messages and strong brand elements uh, that you can provide. Yeah, I can certainly see the, you know, the, the level of excitement and anticipation you can you can generate with live streaming with with things like that. And um, certainly, you know, here in Sydney at 840 in the morning, Ray talking about croissants um, makes me want to walk out the door and walk down to Bake Bar at Double Bay and, and grab one of their fantastic croissants because it's, uh, you know, it's such a treat. But there are so many different things, aren't there, where we can, where we can see that there's going to be a level of, of um, you know, I guess spontaneousness about doing a, a, a live stream. And, um, yeah, I think that can generate, you know, quite a, quite a decent audience if you're doing something like that. You, you mentioned um, that, that the platforms will also generate Notifications. So, just in terms of the the, the promotion the promotion of um, a, a live event, 
Um, can you just sort of take us through that again? What are the what is best practice in terms of pr promoting your live event ahead of time? Sure. So so if it's if it's not sporadic, if it's not spontaneous, uh, where you're just showing up to an event and decided to go live, uh, you know the the goal always is to think. Um, would would bringing would bringing some friends along? That's how I kind of think about it. Would bringing friends and colleagues along to this event be be useful and interesting to them? And if that's the case, then if you're comfortable, go live. Um, if it's a planned event, planned going live. If you're going uh, to live stream, then that the next step is to uh, either uh, be consistent. That is, say, if I decided to be uh, you know, go live every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And uh, it's called kind of like professor's office hours. And I would, uh, you know, these are called, uh, sometimes called Ask Me Anythings, AMAs. And um, the AMAs are where you just open up the, the, the doors and say, hey, if you have any questions about anything that I am an expert on, I'll be happy to answer those questions during that time frame. And so uh, you decide I'm gonna be live for uh, 30 minutes on uh, Mondays at 9 a.m. Uh, that's not true. Don't don't come looking for me. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, then then I would I would go live on the platform of, of choice. And then if it's a regular thing, then you would want to create marketing assets, visual assets to market that time, you know, market that event in essence every every week, so that people knew that it was upcoming, get excited about it, and then you know on occasion you might have some guests stop by, uh, you know, unannounced. Um, so that people know after the fact that you know what you know I was I went live on Monday uh, last week and um, someone really um, interesting showed up and we had this really great conversation and if you had been there you would have had an opportunity to experience that live and ask questions of us live so don't miss future weeks where that might happen because <clears throat> the the could would should um, is enough fear based marketing to get people to show up. On a regular basis, so there's there's part planning, which is being consistent about live recording, but also adding in a little bit of mystery and intrigue that then gets people to show up. Because if it's the same thing every week all the time, then we know that the amount of viewers goes down because they just expect you to always have new content and other kinds of uh, things will become uh, th those those videos then become banal. They become they, they you know kind of, kind of drop into the background because ah if I miss this week Ray will be back next week so who cares right so if you can create little moments of intrigue then it's it's kind of like a, a, a mystery novel right uh, you know if you if you in, insert the right amount of intrigue and and plot points along uh, the, the the story arc then people will be in, in excited to come and watch and so that's really the goal is to is to be consistent. But at the same time, add a little intrigue here and there. You know, say, you know what? Next week we have a really special guest, um, and you don't want to miss out. And so you tease them, and then when uh, the week comes, you have a really fun guest, and uh, and people will will show up. So you have to have a little bit of consistency if you're doing these kind of planned live streams, but also in, invite um, people with with a little bit of a with a little bit of a teaser. Thanks, Ray. Um... You know, a couple of other considerations there, some technical changes that we've got. Um, one of them that, that was mentioned earlier was just our use of sometimes um, background music and also just generally background content. There's some, some tips and, and some sound advice there as well to make sure that we don't, um, I, I guess, offend any copyrights. What's your, what's your take on that? Sure, yeah. So there are, there are legal implications and then there are platform policy issues that you need to be aware of. And what I usually recommend to everybody is that they read the terms of service. Uh, <laughs> I know that's a really difficult thing for a lot of folks, uh, but you really should sit down and read the terms of service for the platforms from which you're gonna be live streaming, just because it's a far more uh, potentially invasive uh, type of technology than say posting something that you've pre-recorded or pre-written uh, and, and or posting. So for example, if you are in what should be considered a private setting and, uh, and you are uh, uh, you know, recording uh, someone who's underaged, a uh, you know, child or whatnot, um, you should know the rules for where you are and how those children um, should or shouldn't be recorded. 
Um, if you're in a public environment, traditionally, um, you are, um, you know, just, you can record people and you need no one's permission. However, you know, changing laws, changing uh, dynamics, uh, what's appropriate should be um, considered in your particular area. Um, to the point you were making about regarding music, uh, in the United States, at least here, we have the DMCA, the Digital Millennial uh, Copyright Act, and there are lots and lots of lawsuits uh, that have uh, been filed against creators, uh, you know, that are live streaming or just uploading video because of their posting video that has uh, music underlying it, and those artists, that is the, the record labels who own the licenses to those artists' music, um, are then uh, you know, attacking YouTube and Facebook and other other platforms for, uh, in essence, not paying royalties for the for the permission and, and use of that music. So making sure that you're abiding by those rules, uh, just so that you don't step on toes. And so just pay attention to the appropriate. There are check boxes usually when when you're ready to go live, and just make sure that you're setting the right things and paying attention to the ambient sounds. You might just be in an environment where uh, they're playing music in the background, uh, but if that music is from the radio, well, you need to have them shut it off or turn it down so that it's not heard in the video. Um, there's some, some it, it, it seems nonsensical, uh, but unfortunately YouTube has to play by uh, their rules and, uh, and so does Facebook and the others. So just be very wary of especially music. It's why one of the number one reasons why I tell people not to use music in podcasts that they upload to YouTube. So if you happen to be syndicating your podcast uh, to YouTube, I just don't recommend it. Um, but for, in the live streaming world, just generally be very wary of the music you're using. And uh, there is music that you can, uh, you know, use and, you know, what we call royalty free um, and free licensed music. There is music out there that you can look for that you can, you can do that. Uh, but generally be wary of that if you're live streaming because uh, your, your feed will potentially be limited or cut off because of it. So just be aware. Of, of the rules of the road. Okay, very good. And technically, everybody's ability to uh, be a, a, a live streaming um, uploader is, is going to change quite a bit because um, 5G is going to have an impact on that, isn't it? Yes, it depends on how we define 5G. Every, every <laughs> telecom uh, has a different definition of what 5G really is. But, um, but yes, HD uh, broadband uh, will will proliferate eventually, you know, whether that's over the next uh, course of five to ten years, and um, that means that more and more video content will consume the internet's, uh, you know, bandwidth, um, and and so we're going to see places that once didn't have access to HD video on mobile and uh, live streaming on mobile just because they couldn't support uh, the the download uh, rates now will have available. Uh, you know, we'll have that available to them. So we're going to see new markets open up just because of uh, the new, uh, you know, basically, you know, bandwidth that's available to them over the mobile internet, um, you know, uh, speeds. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a brave new world as we move forward with uh, with live streaming as more and more people come onto the platform and are able to see uh, people who are willing to um, to do live video. Okay, terrific. Well, there's there's just a, a wealth of opportunities for us in, in business, I think, to use video and to use uh, live video as, as well. Thanks thanks for that, Ray. Um, Barry, I think we've ticked off all the questions that I've had. Have you got any um, further questions for Ray? Uh, no, I think that uh, we've pretty much covered everything now. Uh, I, because I'm into the uh, live stream avenue myself, um, there, uh, it's it's a really exciting place to be, uh, and uh, there are lots of uh, there are lots of programs out there that uh, will allow you to live stream. And you were asking before, Doug, about things like uh, pull throughs and uh, titles and things like that. Uh, you can actually do a lot of that uh, online. Uh, there are programs out there that will allow you to do that and you can do it from your phone. Uh, so uh, that's a little more complicated. Uh, but 
for the for the everyday business that uh, simply wants to promote themselves, I think that this is a terrific platform for them to be able to do this. Um, so maybe at some stage uh, in the near future, we should live stream this show and uh, let people see what the live stream looks like. That might be fun. Sounds dangerous, but exciting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, I hear you. Okay. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for your time today. We will we'll catch up with you again next week. Terrific. Thanks, Thanks Barry. Barry. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Barry. This has been Switched On IT, coming to you from the studios of Power TV Australia uh, in uh, Toowoomba. We have had Ray Sidney Smith from the United States and Doug Endersby from Sydney with us. Uh, they have been talking about video today, live streaming video. Uh, if you have missed any of the shows from the past, don't forget that all of our shows are on video on demand. You can go uh, in the website here on the left hand side, you'll see the switched on IT icon. Simply click on that and then you can pick up any of the shows that we have done in the past. Uh, we will look forward to seeing you again next week when Switched on IT will bring you another view of the internet and everything IT. This has been Barry for Switched on IT. Catch you next time. Power TV Australia presents the Celebrity Christmas Telethon, supported by Optus and Harvey Norman Toowoomba, live from Rumours International, November 23 from 4 till 9 p.m., showcasing some great local talent while raising money for the Toowoomba Hospital Foundation. To donate, phone in and chat to one of our celebrities or be part of the audience at Rumours. For more info, email telethon at powertvaustralia.com or call 0431 390 920. The Celebrity Christmas Telethon, November 23rd, live on powertvaustralia.com.